All right, here we are, the last class uh, for the technician license. Is everybody ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> ready for it to be over. All right, the plan for tonight, um, uh, I'd like you to have a paper out in front of you, and I have blank sheets of paper here, um, and I'd like you to number the paper 1 to 35. And you'll write down what you think the answer is. Warren, you want to play along? So the plan is uh, to take uh, one practice test. We'll go through the questions. When we come to the end of the questions, we can go back and look over any question that you want to uh, repeat or you know, read through again. And then uh, we'll answer uh, the test, and then we'll take a break, and we'll come back and do it again. So two practice tests tonight. And the purpose of this is just for you to be able to ask questions and um, also then uh, to um, maybe pick up one or two more questions that you might not otherwise um, have covered. So everybody ready? Let's get started. So here is question one. Can everybody see that? I can read it off if, if need be. What is the approximate bandwidth of a single sideband SSB voice signal? What is the approximate bandwidth of an SSB signal? A, 3 kilohertz, B, 15 kilohertz, C, 6 kilohertz, and D, 1 kilohertz. Okay. Question two. When the control operator is not the station licensee, who is responsible for the proper operation of the station? A, the control operator and the station licensee are equally responsible. B, only the station licensee. C, only the control operator. Or D, all licensed amateurs who are present at the operation. Okay, question three. What factors affect the RF exposure of people near an amateur station antenna? Better? All right. Question four. And question five. And question six. And question seven. And question eight. Mm -hmm. 
Question nine. Stop me if I go too fast. And question ten. And question 11. And question 12. And question 13. And question 14. All right, and question 15. And question 16. And question 17. Eighteen.
And question 19. And question 20. And 21. And 22. And 23. And 24. Twenty five and twenty six. And twenty seven, and twenty eight. And 29, what is component 4 in figure T2? Question 30.
and 31. Question 33. And question 34. And the last question, 35. So how did we do? Let's find out. And as we go over the answers, we'll, we'll talk about them. And, and hopefully this will just you know, maybe plant a, a memory aid, uh, a seed, so uh, you can remember it maybe. So here's question one. What is the approximate bandwidth of a single sideband signal? That's 3 kilohertz. So 1A, 2, when the control operator is not the station licensee, who is responsible for the proper operation? Well, it's a shared responsibility between the control operator and the station licensee. They're equally responsible, 2A. Three, what factors affect the RF exposure of people near an amateur station? All of these choices are correct. The distance from the antenna, the frequency and power level, and the radiation pattern of the antenna. Four, what is meant by the term third party communications? Uh, that's 4C, a message from a control operator to another amateur station control operator on behalf of another person, the third party. And five, what is the symptom of RF feedback in a transmitter or transceiver? C, reports of garbled, distorted, or unintelligible voice transmissions. It'll sound fuzzy and distorted. Six, which of the following is combined with an inductor to make a tuned circuit? If you have an inductor, then you need a capacitor to make a tuned circuit, so 6D. Seven, how much power is being used in a circuit when the applied voltage is 12 volts and the current is 2.5 amperes? Well, what are you looking for? You're looking for power. So this is from the power formula, the PIE, and it's I times E, or 12 times 2.5, which is A, 30 watts. You're looking for power, so you use that. Eight, which of the following batteries is not rechargeable? The old flashlight battery, carbon zinc. Carbon zincs are not rechargeable, so 8C. Nine, what information is contained in the preamble of a formal traffic message? There's a bunch of stuff, but it's the information needed to track the message as it's passed from station to station, so 9A. 10, how many milliamperes is 1.5 amperes? Well, milli is the 
a metric uh, for a thousandth. So there are 1,500 milliamp years in 1.5 amp years. 11, in which of the following circumstances may the control operator of an amateur station receive compensation for operating that station? When the communication is incidental to classroom instruction at an educational institution. Think of the high school physics teacher. 11D. And 12, what is generally the best time for long distance 10 meter band propagation via the F layer? Unfortunately, it's not right now. We're at the bottom of the sunspot cycle, but 10 meters really likes to have a lot of sunspots. So you, lots of sunspots and it's a daytime band. So high noon is good for 10 meters. So from dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of high sunspot activity. So daytime, high sunspots, 10 meters. And if your license has expired, but it's still within the allowable grace period, may you continue to operate a new 13D no transmitting is not allowed until the FCC license database shows the license has been renewed, which won't take very long. You can do it online. And 14, what is the approximate length in inches of a half wavelength six meter dipole antenna? So for six meters, a full wavelength is six meters long. And think of a meter as about a yard. It's a little longer than a yard, but think of it, okay. So, so a full wavelength is six, a half wavelength is gonna be three. So three meters, or three yards approximately. And so three times 36 would get you to uh, 100 and something, 112. That's how you can get there. So 14B. And 15, what is the current through a 100 ohm resistor connected across 200 volts? So this is EIR, and you're trying to find the current. So it's voltage divided by the resistance, or 200 divided by 100, in this case, two amperes. And 16, which of the following is an application of APRS? the automatic packet reporting system. That's the system that uh, uses packet radio to report your location. And you can go online to aprs.fi or other websites and find the location of amateur radio operators, maybe as they're driving around in their car. So it's providing real-time tactical digital communications. You can send text messages over APRS in conjunction with a map. So that's the key. APRS, think map. And 17, what is meant by voice over internet protocol? B, it's a method of delivering voice communications over the internet using digital techniques. And it's utilized by Echolink or IRLP and, and other systems. And what are the two components of a radio wave? A radio wave is an electromagnetic wave, so it has an electric and a magnetic field, fields too. So electric and magnetic fields make up the wave. And 19, what is the name for the flow of electrons in an electric circuit? That's the current, current flow. And 20, which of the following is a likely cause of irregular fading of signals received by ionospheric reflection? Another name for multipath, it's the random combining of signals arriving via different paths. So 20C. And what is the purpose of a safety wire through a turnbuckle used to tension guy wires? It's to prevent it from coming loose. It's to prevent the turnbuckle from rotating. And 22, what types of tones are used in, to control repeaters, you're controlling a repeater, linked by the Internet Relay Linking Project Protocol, or Echolink, 
it's the push button on the radio. It's the DTMF, or dual tone multi-frequency. It's Ma Bell's touchstone phone all over again. And which of the following might damage a multimeter? Oh, you let the smoke out by attempting to measure voltage when you have the multimeter in the resistance setting. That'll let the smoke out of the multimeter. And 24, what is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? Well, it's to interrupt the power in case of a current overload. If too much current is being drawn, the fuse will open up. And 25, what is the primary purpose of a dummy load? A dummy load is also known as a test antenna. It's to prevent transmitting signals over the air when making tests. It can be a resistor in a can of mineral oil, and it should not radiate. And 26, which of the following electronic components can amplify signals? A transistor. A transistor has gain. So when it's set up in that fashion, then you can amplify signals with a transistor. And 27, which term describes the ability of a receiver to discriminate between multiple signals? That's the receiver's selectivity. How selective is the receiver? And 28, what is the advantage of having multiple received bandwidth choices? Well, by matching the receive bandwidth to the transmit bandwidth, you get the maximum signal to noise. So it permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode that, you're, that is being transmitted. All right, and on the diagram, what is component four right there in the middle? That is a transformer. And 30, where should the negative return connection of a mobile transceiver's power cable be connected? At the battery negative terminal or the engine block ground strap. And 31, the national calling frequency for FM simplex in the 2 meter band is 146.52 megahertz. And 32, which of the following are inputs to a satellite tracking program? The astronomer Johannes Kepler. We talked about Keplerian elements. Back in the day when I worked for VOA, they called them ephemeris elements, which is a Greek word for floating in air. But Kepler, Johannes Kepler, the Keplerian elements. And 33, which agency regulates and enforces the rules for amateur radio? That would be the FCC. And 34, except for some specific restrictions, what is the maximum peak envelope power for technician class operators? Above 30 megahertz, full legal limit, 1,500 watts. And 35, what can cause erratic changes in SWR readings? Well, that would be a loose connection. In an antenna or a feed line, if it's moving around in the wind, you'll see the SWR go up, down, up, down, up, down. So nine wrong, that's the maximum number you can get wrong, or 26 right. So I'm not going to collect your papers. It's, it's all on you, but take, take a look. Um, and let's take five minutes as a break, and we'll come back and do it again. It's so much fun. <laughs>